at CES this year, AMD unveiled a bunch of new tech they have coming out over the next couple of months. And while we finally had an announcement we were all waiting for about the X3D CPUs, it wasn't the show stealer we were all expecting. No, not even close actually. That honor goes to the three non-X CPUs revealed, the Ryzen 7900, 7700, and 7600. But what makes these CPUs amazing? Well, outside of being the best small form factor CPUs released this generation, something we'll talk about later, it's the price. The Ryzen 9 7900's price undercuts AMD's X variant by $130, bringing the price down to $429. Similar types of price drops can be seen for the other chips too, allowing the 7700 to land at $329, $70 less than 7700X. And the 7600 comes in at $229, also $70 less than the X counterpart. With savings like these, you would think that AMD would probably gimp these chips pretty hard. In reality, that's not the case. And while yes, the chips are underclocked to help meet their target power consumption, they performance losses on average for the 7900 and 7700 are less than 5% in gaming compared to their X versions. For the 7600, it gets even better, having less than half a percent in difference on average in gaming. If you want the best bang for your buck in gaming, the Ryzen 7600 seems like a no-brainer. Flipping things over to productivity, we can actually see where these chips struggle. With more CPU intensive tasks, each chip loses between 10 and 15% in performance. This does make sense though since AMD has put such a low power consumption limit on these CPUs. But AMD being AMD left open the door for overclocking. Given that you have a cooler with plenty of overhead, you can utilize precision boost overclocking built into Ryzen Master to auto overclock any of these new CPUs and you get near identical performance that are given X CPUs. This isn't the limit either. You can easily go into Ryzen Master or your BIOS and manually overclock it even further. Of course, that is up to the person who owns the chip. Instead, someone could plug these chips into a small 4-factor build, as is, and these CPUs would kill it. Why? Because of those power limits I mentioned earlier. AMD has set a 65 watt limit on all three CPUs, which means AMD was able to get those performance levels on chips drawing anywhere from 40 to 60% less power compared to their X variants, meaning you can slap pretty much any low profile cooler on them without issue. Quite the convenience factor that typically isn't an option with ITX builds. Plus, you have more flexibility when you choose a power supply too, due to the low power consumption limit. What is there not to love? Well, there is that platform cost. Yes, you are saving a ton of money on the CPU, but you will be putting that money into a new motherboard and DDR5 memory. Sadly, the prices on those components have not seen any significant price drops since the initial release of the Ryzen 7000 series. But given AMD's track record on platform longevity, you could reasonably expect to carry those components three to four generations later down the line, making for some solid future proofing. But what are your thoughts on the new non-X CPUs? Feel free to leave a comment below the like button there. And if you're wanting to see a video on the X3D chips, check out this one I made before CES to see if my theories became true. And I'll see you next time.